Hello, it's the Coaster Craze, and today I'm reviewing Candemonium at Hershey Park. This is a B&M hypercoaster that opened in 2020 with the new front entrance area of the park, Chocolate Town. I got the chance to ride it over this past summer in July 2021, and I only got one ride, unfortunately, because the crowds were crazy. It was a very long line, but it was back row at the end of the day in the summer, so it was a really, really great ride. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down the coaster, reviewing it on different facets like intensity, layout, smoothness, restraints, etc. So let's get right into it. So I first want to describe the aesthetic of the coaster and what it's like when you enter. So you see it right away as you're driving to the parking lot. And this new Chocolate Town area, once you enter, even before the park, even like the, before the park entrance, it is just really, really well done and well themed with the whole chocolate feel. And you see the backdrop behind the new entrance sign is Candemonium, that first drop. It looks phenomenal. I saw it during construction back in 2019, and I was really curious to see how it turned out, and it really blew my expectations away. It gets you excited about the coaster right away, and it's now this new massive front entrance coaster for the park, which is great. In terms of theming, there isn't a ton. It does have a sick front entrance sign. And as you get to the later parts of the queue, especially the station, there's some cool lights and different ceiling decorations in terms of like the different chocolate bars that theme the trains like Hershey's and Hershey Kiss, Twizzler, Reese's. So that's kind of cool and it's fun. They have a big coaster themed to chocolate now, even though there isn't actually much in terms of theming. Obviously, there's nothing on ride and there's not much in the queue either. It's a really long and boring queue, unfortunately. But in terms of the actual ride experience, once you're on it, you get some phenomenal views. It's really cool that Hershey Park now has a coaster that's separated from all the other ones. Even though it's nice that they have a lot of coasters that intertwine with each other, Candemonium is given that b and hyper space to breathe where it goes out and back into the woods. You pass over a creek. It is gorgeous. And in terms of the ride experience, I'll walk through it. It starts with basically you know a big lift up a little bit over 200 feet. And then you hit your first drop at 77 degrees. It is a bit steeper than lots of the other B&M hyper drops, especially the older ones. And I could really feel the difference in the back row. This might be my favorite drop on any B&M I have ever ridden. It is really powerful. Granted, I haven't ridden any of the gigas that they've done, but it really throws you out of your seat. And then you hit the 76 mile per hour max speed at the bottom. You get some decent positive Gs, but that first drop really is sensational. In my opinion, it's the best part of the ride. I've realized with the newer hypers like Mako as well, the lift is a little bit faster and kind of pushes you over the top, especially if you're in the back. And you really do get some insane whippy airtime. Then you go into your first massive camelback where you get some phenomenal floater air. This is prime B&M floater. And I must add that this coaster is butter smooth, which is really awesome. It's kind of expected. It's a new B&M, but that's great to see. And the restraints are solid too. It's the clamshells. I love them. You get a lot of airtime, especially if you don't get stapled. And thankfully, I was not stapled, which is really nice. Coming out of that massive camelback, you go into your hammerhead turn. And this one is a lot better than the other ones I've been on on the other hypers because it's really overbanked, like very significantly and you can feel it it's very whippy and one of my favorite elements of the ride is kind of a standout because it really differentiates it from other bnm hypers which often have similar layouts then you go up into a very trimmed airtime hill that i was not a big fan of you definitely get a bit of airtime but it kind of reminded me of mako's trim hill where it's a little uncomfortable and awkward and you don't really get as much as you should be able to then you go into your speed hill. This is a really fun element, and though I wouldn't really call it full-on ejector, you do get pushed out of your seat pretty hard, and it's a great little moment that really differentiates it from the larger hills that came before it. You then go up into an upward helix that I really loved. Very different than Nitro's because this one's a lot shorter and it's more low to the ground, but still super intense. I did not gray out like I usually do on Nitro's. This isn't nearly as intense, but it is really fantastic. And just very whippy as you twist out of it into this almost wave turn style airtime hill. And I've heard mixed things about it. I've heard it's better in the front row. And since I did experience it in the back, I can say it is fun, but it wasn't as powerful as I was expecting. I definitely got the whip, but you don't get nearly as much air as in the back as I think you do in the front. And this is a ride that I really want to return to Street Park to get the front row ride to see how it feels and to fully understand the ride. Then after that, you go into another airtime hill that was kind of decent, forgettable, I would say, but not so bad. And then you go into kind of like a helix around the Kisses Fountain. That's like the centerpiece of the new Chocolate Town area. 
and this is more scenic than anything else. It was very enjoyable to like get a little panoramic view of the fountain and stuff and pass by people, but it doesn't do much in the name of forces. You then hit a couple airtime pops that are tiny into the brake run, and those give a slight little, you know, fling up in your seat, but nothing super substantial, probably a bit more in the front row again. So overall, what are my thoughts? Well, it's super comfortable, obviously, to ride. You know, it's a new B&M, so it's super enjoyable and re-rideable, which is awesome because Hershey Park, they have some really big, intense coasters, but this one, even though it has some intensity, it's going to be a crowd favorite. It's going to please the enthusiasts. It's going to please young kids, older people, middle-aged people, teenagers, you name it. It is wide ride appeal, which is great, and it is a capacity machine. Three trains are massive. The unfortunate part is when I went, Hershey's, operations were so slow that it was basically like they were running one train there was double train stacking in the brake run which is really unfortunate to see i'm not sure if that's usual but just be prepared for long waits this might be something that you want to get to right when the park opens even though it won't be warmed up yet because the weight does really build up but overall i really enjoyed it it i think is one of the weaker bnm hypers which still means it's a great ride but the main reason for that is the length. It's a little over 4,600 feet of track, which is shorter than most of the other ones. And I think that really is a fault because even though every element is really strong for the most part, and I would say that they're all very different from each other, which is great because sometimes these hypers can get very repetitive. I wish there was more. There should have been more airtime. And for that one trim hill and then the couple hills at the end to be kind of forgettable and mediocre is really unfortunate because a ride that doesn't have a ton of elements Everyone needs to stand out, and there are definitely standout elements, especially during the first half with that massive camelback, the drop, and the hammerhead, and the speed hill as well, but after the speed hill, it's kind of just downhill from there. There are some decently fun elements, and it is overall super fun ride, but it wasn't something that completely wowed me. I think it's a really a great ride overall, and it's a great fit for Hershey Park, even though they already have a Hyper Beast Skyrush, is a completely different beast. I would say this is my number two in the park after Sky Rush because that ride does it for me a lot more just in terms of the intensity and the airtime. But again, like I said, this is a crowd pleaser. I think it's really strong. Does it stack up with the other BM hypers? It's probably in the low to mid tier, I would say, of the ones I've ridden in the US. But it is still a really solid ride that I think, though maybe it's not something you need to get out from all over the country to go to Hershey Park to ride it, it really fills out their ride collection and makes them just have one of the best coaster lineups of any park in the world. It's a really fun coaster, and I think it's a really strong example of a modern B&M that incorporates some newer elements to change up the pace a little bit, even though it doesn't boast that length and some of the really just sheer amount of floater airtime as some of the older B&M hypers that I've been on. So I'll be giving Candemonium a 9 out of 10. It is a really fantastic ride in the grand scheme of coasters, it doesn't get much better than this. Maybe if it was a bit longer and if a couple more of the elements popped off a bit more, it could be higher, but overall, it is fantastic. So thank you for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed. Like and subscribe to the Coaster Craze if you want to see more like this, vlogs, park experience videos from all over the country coming very soon. This is Coaster Craze signing off. Goodbye.